All righty then. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, it's actually really awesome to see quite a few faces here today. Thank you for uh, finding the time to join us in this session. Today, myself and Antonio will talk about all things environmental sustainability tag. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Uh, my name is Kristina Devochko. I'm a platform engineer at Theatre Every, a CNCF ambassador and a technical lead at Environmental Sustainability Technical Advisory Group. Yeah, and I'm Antonio Di Turi. I'm a consultant at Data Reply, and I'm also co-chair of the working group Green Reviews in the Tag Game Sustainability. Yeah, so mm, I think, I assume that some of you here may be hearing about Environmental Sustainability Technical Advisory Group, or shortly Tag Env, for the first time today. And I think it, this talk can be a great opportunity to give a quick introduction about what Tag Env is about and what, uh, what things are we actually doing in the tag. Uh, our tag is quite young and it was founded a bit under two years ago in May 2022. And I think that the title for this talk actually sums up pretty well the reason behind why this technical advisory group was created in the first place. We wanted to create an arena, a uh, forum, a place where we could gather community members from cloud native and open source community that are passionate about the topic of environmental sustainability. So that together, as part of the group, we could advocate for and help support um, and help guide on how to evaluate environmental uh, and, and help guide the environmental sustainability initiatives that are going on in the cloud native and open source space so that we could identify uh, potential initiatives and activities that contribute to reducing the energy and resource consumption and the overall um, environmental sustainability footprint in the space, so that we could raise awareness of importance of this topic and support the existing and upcoming projects that are making impactful contributions to improve the environmental sustainability footprint of the cloud native and open source space. And one message that you will hear throughout this session and also throughout everything we do and communicate in the tag is that all we do is done publicly in a transparent and open manner. And this means that every one of you sitting here today is very much welcome to join us and, and contribute um, and just become, become a part of this great group. And in order to be able to expand what we do and to kind of keep the live in this group and keep all the activities that we are doing kind of um, yeah, uh, going on and uh, doing it in a healthy manner, there is, of course, some need for some kind of structure and governance where some of the contributors to the tag can take a little bit more responsibility um, to ensure that we keep things uh, happening in a healthy manner. And therefore, there is, of course, the reason to have some governance and structure in the, in the tag. That is pretty similar to any other tags that um, operate under the CNCF ecosystem. So this currently illustrates uh, how we are structured in the group. We have some overall um, roles like technical lead and the, uh, the chairs of the tag, and they uh, are, these are community contributors that take a bit more responsibility on kind of driving the overall roadmap and ensuring that what we do is actually in scope of our mission and goals. Uh, and technical lead support, um, kind of also more of the technical decision taking, uh, decision taking across the different activities we do in the tag. We also have a technical oversight committee liaison who helps us to ensure that we have an efficient communication and collaboration uh, between the TAG and the technical oversight committee. And we also help the talk and kind of help them and guide them on how we can uh, take the roadmap of the environmental sustainability initiatives in the CNCF, uh, for, take it further and, uh, and kind of grow it over time. 
And we also have the same roles in the sub-entities that operate as part of the tag, like working groups and projects, which we're going to talk a bit uh, more about uh, shortly. And one um, important thing to mention is that we don't have members in the group, and we believe that everyone who actively participates in any kind of activities, be it technical or non-technical, like joining our meetings, uh, suggest, suggesting uh, things that we should focus on or suggesting uh, some changes to the existing projects or initiatives, contributing code or documentation, everyone becomes a contributor of the tag. And without our great contributors, everyone who does uh, help us, uh, be it small or bigger contributions, every one of these counts, and we, we appreciate you and we value you. I think that's important to mention. And we also have a tag ambassador role in the works. No, uh, this kind of will be the role that will be the same for all the tags in the CNCF project, and that has as a goal to strengthen collaboration between the tags in the CNCF, the CNCF projects, and also the CNCF ambassador program. So if you would like to learn more about that, we will also share the link to the GitHub issue where it's described in more details. And that's how the current TAG environmental sustainability team looks like. At this point, we don't have the project uh, leads um, illustrated on this slide because we have quite a few projects that we started up very recently, right before the KubeCon and CloudNativeCon. But if you would like to learn more, we also have a separate governance um, information in our repository, which we will also share, share links to. And as I mentioned, we would like to expand our impact and do more. And therefore, we also believe that this team will grow over time because we would also like to give opportunity for our contributors to take a little bit more responsibility and to help each other and support each other, each other so, that we can, so that we can grow and um, do it in a, in a healthy manner. So I shared a little bit about like the technical advisory group overall, uh, but I would also like to go more into details on what we do in the um, sub-entities of the tag. And the first kind of type of sub-entities sub I would like to talk about is the working groups. So while the tag env focuses a little bit overall on the mission and the, the goals of what we do as this bigger group, Working groups, they have a little bit of a different goal. They're a little bit more narrowly scoped. Typically, when there is a challenge, a known challenge that needs some kind of solution, or we need to provide some kind of a document, a white paper, or maybe a deliverable, a solution to cope with specific challenges in terms of environmental sustainability in the cloud native space, we are looking into possibilities to create a working group with, where you could work like more scoped on that over some longer period of time. And in the tech currently, we have two groups. Uh, the first working group is Green Reviews, which Antonio will share a bit more about shortly. And the main goal of that group is more technical uh, compared to the comms working group. So what the Green Reviews working group does is that they are working on building a um, workflow that can help measure the overall environmental sustainability footprint of all the projects in the CNCF landscape and guide the project maintainers uh, on how this um, environmental sustainability footprint could be improved over time and also make this data publicly available for the community because we believe that's that's where, how it should be. This data should be available publicly and transparently um, so that we could also take it into evaluation during adopting the different projects and software and also improve over time. And the second working group is the comms working group, which is, focuses maybe on more non-technical activities like helping us with uh, sharing the content, supporting uh, community members who would like to contribute content to the tag that is related to environmental sustainability and also 
um, spread the word about us so that next year we can see this uh, audience being fully filled. And to be able to do that, we need to increase visibility. We need to be able to inspire you to share the word about us and what we do. And that's why this working group also helps uh, with that during events like KubeCon and CloudNativeCon. And from when it comes to projects, they are even more uh, narrowly scoped than working groups, and they um, are they have like a more short term duration. So it is very scoped to a very specific deliverable that we would like to produce, and that normally happens uh, over a shorter period of time, so that it's a little bit easier to ma manage and uh, measure. And currently we have six projects, many of them kind of started just uh, in terms of weeks before the KubeCon and CloudNativeCon, and those that are marked in light green are currently in planning. And even if some of them are actively being developed or are in planning, we are always looking for other community members, new community members to join, uh, to join as contributors in all of this project. So if one of these or maybe more of them spark your interest, um, you're very much welcome to check out the link to GitHub issues and let us know that you would like to be a part of that. And to shortly kind of give you an insight of what those projects are about, we can start with the landscape document. Uh, currently, we have a version of the landscape document available on our website. And what this document actually is, is that it basically describes the current challenges when it comes to environmental sustainability in the cloud native space. What kind of initiatives, frameworks, standards, tools are available for us to kind of learn more about how they could help cope with some of these challenges and how we could integrate those into our own uh, projects. But we would like to make it a bit more approachable, a bit more user friendly, and maybe a bit more scoped to what role you are currently working with. And therefore, we are rewriting uh, the landscape document and making it uh, even more uh, reader friendly and also more approachable for the community that may have different levels of knowledge around the topic of cloud native sustainability. And we have one of our awesome contributors here in the middle, being a reporter, a journalist today, Jochen, that is, has been putting a lot of time and effort in doing that. And doing it by yourself is a tough work. Therefore, if you have experience with some of the tools or maybe would like to learn more about that, we don't have any like requirements in terms of your um, experience with that, we will help you. Um, we will help you get there, so it's not that scary as it seems to get started. So you can join Jochen on this exciting journey of the <laughs> rewriting the document <laughs> and making it available soon. <laughs> Thanks. Um, another project that we are currently planning, so we are looking for uh, folks to help us drive that and also maybe who have some experience with, with that is the Learning Path project where we would like to create a step-by-step -step, um, overview of how you could learn more about the topic of environmental sustainability in the, uh, in the cloud native space so that you could kind of learn and, and grow your skills and knowledge uh, about that. So it somewhat may be like the green software for, green software practitioner, just not a certification, but more like of a material that you could use for, uh, to learn more about it. Uh, another project we have in planning is to gather user stories from the companies out there that are adopting uh, the tools or um, frameworks or, for example, specifications like software carbon intensity specification or tools like Kepler that we are utilizing as well in the working group. Um, and we would like to hear those real life stories that we could share so that other companies and other um, end users, uh, for example, of CNCF um, tools can learn from that. So if you are, for example, doing something around the environmental sustainability where you work, if you are adopting some of these tools, we would like to know about that and we would like, we would love if you could reach out to us and help us share these stories to um, help others on their, on their journey with, um, with adoption of such tools. 
Uh, benchmarking white paper is also something we're working on. We would like to provide a white paper that could help you measure the efficiency of your deployments, and it's quite a challenging one when it comes to the technicalities in terms of how you could measure the efficiency of deployments, what is the scope of such measurement, and what kind of metrics could we use. So, for instance, things like um, embodied carbon could be a little bit more concrete to measure with and may, without making too many assumptions compared to metrics uh, like networking. So there is a good discussion going on in the issue on what kind of metrics could be used to perform such measurement of efficiency of, uh, of the deployment. So if you are interested in like more deep dive on the technical side of things around this topic, we would love to hear from you as well. Uh, uh, Kubernetes best practices for sustainability is uh, a document that we are, are also working on actively as we speak right now. So we have folks who have been doing uh, concrete things in their projects and their companies in terms of running more resource and energy efficient workloads on Kubernetes and also making the Kubernetes itself to be more resource efficient. And we would like to have make this concrete information on how you could do that as well available for the community. So we are actively working on that project and have regular discussions in the meetings, which if this is something that interests you and you would like to help us uh, share this and help others to do uh, to do that, you're also welcome to join. And the last one is a smaller project that we're working on, and that's a green scraper tool. So one of our community contributors built a tool that basically will help us to create an automated workflow to scrape data about environmental sustainability, cloud native environmental sustainability sessions and events happening in the community and automatically make this list available on our website and keep it continuously updated so that you could have an easy access in one place to learn more and uh, get more content from other community members who are sharing knowledge around the topic of cloud native environmental sustainability. And one last thing that I would like to mention uh, is um, not a project or a working group in itself, but an event that we have uh, done for the very first time in collaboration with CNCF uh, in October last year, and that is a Cloud Native Sustainability Week. And we wanted with that event to create a place over some time where both local communities, but also the global community could come together, share knowledge and their experiences, stories on the topic of environmental sustainability, learn from each other, discuss this topic and the challenges and how we could cope with these challenges, and also raise awareness about the things we are doing in the tag. And we got an overwhelmingly positive feedback from the community. We had daily blog posts and live streams and a virtual mini conference. And we had more than 22 local meetups that were done by the local organizers in 17 countries spread over four continents. I find it amazing for a first time event. And I think the community really appreciated that based on the feedback. So we have a wrap up blog post sharing the findings from the survey about community appreciating that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it deserves that. And um, based on that, we would like to make it an annual event. So if you would like to help us um, in any way, like uh, organizing a local meetup in the city where you live, uh, help us with artworks, with blog posts on the topic, with engagement, just by sharing the information about the Cloud Native Sustainability Week, you are very much welcome to join us. We have a GitHub issue for that as well, where you could uh, share that you're interested and we'll get you involved. All right, Antonio, I think it's time for you to share a few exciting details about what you do in the Green Reviews Working Group and how far you've come for the last six months. Yeah, but first, a big round of applause to Christina because like, this, like, she was an incredible contributor and I don't know how many hours she spent. Like, she's giving applause to everybody, but really like, she did a lot of this work. So let's get started. So we all know that computing power is gonna be more and more. So AI, crypto, metaverse, computing power is gonna grow 
and uh, we need a sustainability approach, we need a sustainability assessment. Uh, this, is, this awareness is there for the CNCF projects as well. And our vision would be to do something like a sustainability assessment, a CO2 footprint calculation in the reliefs life cycle. So to set the scene and understand what we would like to do in practice, we have to understand that the, um, our working group works under the umbrella of the TAG. And uh, what we would like to do is to produce sustainable metrics uh, with respect to the projects that are willing to have uh, green reviews. We will decide when to accept a green reviews. This is, this is mainly because like, we are voluntarily led um, association, so we don't want to like, burn out too quickly. And we know this might be a problem in, in CNCF. And we are, not, like, we are completely independent. And that's why we would like to use existing tools, plug it in together, and try, um, try to be a point of contact for every CNCF project that would like to be its sustainability footprint to be assessed. So it's also important to have a clear statement of the goals and non goals when we talk about sustainability footprint. So our goal is to have this assessment, right? Like to build together a platform that uses existing tools and be a point of contact in communicating a sustainability footprint um, publicly. So we'll have public Grafana dashboard that everybody can, can access. And we will not provide individual contribution to, to others uh, repo. We will not provide consultancy that is under the scope of like what we told, uh, what we what I showed you right now, and um, I think this is important. And another important thing to mention is the um, shared uh, responsibility model. And um, since like our our work is mainly um, about building bridge between different CNCF projects, so like we use a platform that other projects can use to um, to evaluate their carbon foot print availability. Um, yeah, like it's important to mention that under the responsibility of a CNCF project, there is like the main repo. So like they give us a release and they give us some use cases. And we in our platform, we, we would like to use infrastructure as software to, um, to produce these metrics. So like there will be a GitHub action which is triggered and it's, it's mainly, um, its main job would be to um, yeah, install the project, produce the metrics and publish them. So let's get a bit more technical and let's try to understand what happens when we would like to produce such metrics. Here you can recognize on the top the CNCF projects, X, Y, whatever. And, and there you can see on the right, on, in yellow, our Equinix based infrastructure. We decided to go bare metal because we think that it's more important to access low level hardware metrics related to energy to have a more um, yeah, like precise measurement about what's going on in the cluster. We have, of course, a Kubernetes cluster, some observability tools. Um, yeah, I would like to mention Kepler, which is an important CNCF project that's provide, uh, it's providing energy metrics at container level using um, eBPF. And uh, we also have Prometheus um, to collect um, all the metrics and Grafana to, publish, to publicly share uh, these metrics. And then you can see um, a relief of, the, of a CNCF project will, um, via webbook, this is our vision, will trigger a GitHub action that will start a benchmarking pipeline. And this pipeline could provision real-time and benchmarking nodes. And like here we had um, an example of two uh, benchmarking nodes, one for idle usage of a software and another one for um, any benchmark that you can think of, like we call it that star in this case. Everything is managed with uh, GitOps praxis, and yeah, like we hope um, that that this will be will be will be done soon. So let me let me first introduce the um, the SCI score. So this is this answer. Okay, like what metrics exactly are we publishing? And this is the software carbon intensity score. It's um, a soon-to-be ISO standard. Uh, which calculates the carbon footprint emissions um, of, a, of a software use case. And it has, as a main factor, the energy multiplied by the um, intensity of, the, um, of this energy. This is, like in our case, a constant. And then we add on top the embodied carbon f uh, used for the hardware. And then we have a functional unit. You can think of a functional unit on uh, um, a factor that scales your software. It's usually API or usage. 
In this case, we used a 15 minutes, um, a 15 minutes time for the software to be used. And it's with great pride that we can show you today like our first metrics produced. This was our first milestone to be concrete and do some data. You can, you can already see that the SCI is highly dominated by the embodied um, carbon, which may be a problem, right? Because software or like CNCF projects um, are not really interested about the carbon which is embodied in the software that we are running as a platform. And this raises some questions which are open that we are willing to discuss with anybody who is willing to take a look at this data and improve our pipeline. But, but still, it's, it has been um, a big effort to produce this metric. So uh, yeah, like a big applause to the community. So um, this is our roadmap. Um, the working group was founded in September 2023. Falco was the first project we requested officially a green review. And uh, in February, we had our um, Kubernetes platform up and running. And here today, we have shown you the first sustainability metrics that we have produced. And for Q2, we would like to have um, a workflow automated. So like everything that you saw, that you saw about the GitHub action called via webhook from the release of another CNCF project is not there yet. Uh, we have manually deployed the release and the project, but we believe that we can get there within the next milestone. And then we would like to see what will be the, the new project, the next project that we will evaluate um, the sustainability footprint assessment. Yeah, so overall, this has been quite quick. Uh, in only six months, we reached uh, like plus 100 commits and we resolved the first 10 issues. Might look like small numbers, but yeah, there, there was really a lot of work behind. And the platform is up and running. Um, the first sustainability metrics have been produced. And yeah, this wouldn't be possible also without Nikki and Ross. So yeah, thank Leo, everybody basically. But uh, yeah, like there has been a huge effort, voluntarily based effort to, to do this. So yeah, it's great, great to see so many people and yeah, to share these results with you. Awesome, thank you, Antonio. And uh, there is still uh... More to do, so if you would like to contribute, the, it's not only code we are looking for, we're also doing a lot of efforts on documenting that so that others can use this reference architecture for inspiration and maybe for uh, further improvement of that. So you're welcome to join that. And we also released right before uh, the start of KubeCon and CloudNativeCon, a blog post that goes more deeply into the technical details as well of how this reference architecture is built. So you could also read it on our blog, in our blog section on the website to learn even more about, about this um, platform. And to round a bit up, I would also like to share some reflections of what we have achieved as a tag for the last less than two years, which I find to be quite quite impressive. Uh, I have been a part of many communities through the last two years and personally I uh, felt quite lonely often, especially at work, trying to communicate the message of why we as developers or platform engineers or technical resources should care about environmental sustainability and why it's not an isolated issue or a political issue. It's something bigger that for us who are interested in the science-based data and empirical data, it is available for us to look at to understand that this is a real challenge that is backed up by real empirical data. And that's important for us to care about it. And it felt really lonely for me for quite some time until I just joined the TAG project meeting in last KubeCon and CloudNativeCon in Amsterdam. And since then, it, I don't know, I am biased, I guess, but this has been, for me, the most diverse, inclusive, and open, and warm, and welcoming community. And I would, uh, I, 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 I don't know, I'm like really getting emotional about that because I have never been a part of a community like that, that is really passionate and where we support each other and together can make things happen, like getting that blog post out in terms of a few days where like 10 people just 
just put their effort to make this happen, to make it available for the community. So if you also feel like that, if you would like to be a part of the community that makes an impact, this is the place. And we have grown during this time to more than 1,000 contributors across all of the different tag channels. And we checked our repositories, and we have more than 70 contributors who also did some kind of contribution to our repositories. We now have two active working groups and six projects that are either in planning or are active. All or parts of our content on our website is now available in four languages, and we even had students contributing to the translations, and we are currently working on automating the kind of um, the need for translations in case we get changes to the content so that we can keep it updated and scale even further. So if you would like to help us reach other, uh, a broader community in the globe with our content and you uh, would like to contribute to some other language than English, uh, please join us. We would welcome that very much. And there was also a great lightning talk on Tuesday about the need for uh, having this multiple content in multiple languages available to reach more people and convey our message. And we had a successful Cloud Native Sustainability Week event for the first one with more than 3,000 participants, like I said, across 17 countries and four continents. And we have content that keeps growing. We get blog post contributions, we get live streams, recordings, and we have documents to reference by the community like Cloud Native Sustainability Landscape and Cloud Native Environmental Sustainability Glossary. And to round it up, all of this would not have been possible without all of you, everyone who contributed, everyone who has been supporting us, who has been sharing our, what we do or contributing directly to that. We are quite international, quite diverse. So that's how from our tag end of meetings and that's from the Cloud Native Sustainability Week and the different meetups. But I also, in the last minute, did put in a few pictures of us from KubeCon and Cloud NativeCon from this year. We gathered ourselves here. We have a booth that is still open where you come, can come talk to us, to our contributors. Still open today for some time till half past one. And it's also open tomorrow. So if you'd like to learn more, have any additional questions, come, come join us. Um, and we also got an interview today also. So uh, hopefully we can get uh, to spread the message even more. So we are a very nice community to join, very biased information. So how can you, <laughs> how can you contribute? If, you, if this sounds like something that could interest you, we have simple steps how you could start and join us. We have a contributor guide available in our repository where you could uh, which we would uh, recommend to read. Uh, we have issues that are marked as help wanted or good first issue that should also help some, uh, some of you to start, uh, start picking, picking that up and maybe helping us out on those. We have regular meetings in the tag, but also in the working group, groups and projects in, and the projects. So you could choose from those that interest you most. We uh, have, um, yeah, our Slack channels as well for the working groups for some of the projects and our Tag Environmental Sustainability Slack channel under CNCF workspace. Um, you could also help us with the events like Cloud Native Sustainability Week and basically just share suggestions or ideas you may have on what we should focus on. We have also recordings for how to start contributing from previously, but we will also have live um, sessions like that again a few weeks after uh, KubeCon and Cloud NativeCon. So you could follow our calendar for the tag, which is publicly available, and we will announce those sessions soon that you could join live. Yeah, and I think that's it. We have a few links that are gathered in one place on how you could reach out to us and how you get can get access to all the activities we're working on. So you could just scan that QR code and you'll get all those links in one place. And we are open for questions. Uh, so don't be shy if you would like to learn something. Yeah, awesome. Um, uh, are you planning to open it up to projects that are not part of the CNCF or that are applying to be part of the CNCF? And uh, if I can, another thing is, um, if I understood correctly, you will measure how a project, the cost of running a certain project, 
Um, but do you also plan to measure the building and processing of that project before it reaches a, a user? Are, who, who, will, who will answer that? If there are, que you, if there I are will questions. Answer that? Okay. If there okay. are questions, please queue. Um, yeah, with you, okay. Oh, okay. You want to answer that or shall? Yeah, like the, the true answer is that I don't know. <laughs> so I, I guess first will be CNCF projects, right? Like to give uh, precedence. And we are just, we haven't uh, drawn a fully detailed roadmap yet. Uh, what you saw like about the new project is still like in the next quarter. So first we'll have to fully automate the current solution, uh, be sure that we have something that scales, and then we'll open up the discussion for, uh, for what would be the next project, either CNCF or non-CNCF. I don't think that matters too much. Yeah, and in terms of measurement, I think the second question was like, if you, we measure before the execution, was that before the execution yeah, of the... In our project, I worry more about the cost of how we build it than once it is in the hands of the user. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a very good point. There are many aspects that we haven't touched, like pipelines. Uh, also, we haven't assessed the sustainability of the benchmarking. Um, there is an issue basically for everything actually in the repo, but we have to do a, a careful planning and we have to use our energy wisely and try to see like what we can address step by step. Yeah, but I think one thing that we are doing in the working group as well is that we also assess how, the, how a resource efficient is our own workflow that we are building. So we are also looking into ways how we could measure the pipeline that, uh, or the workflow that is running. So we. Uh, would like to document that information as well so that it could be available and applicable also outside of the CNCF. It's not, we have not decided yet if we can like make this workflow assist um, companies outside of the CNCF with uh, use, utilizing that workflow, but you can gain a lot of inspiration and kind of concrete information how we, we do that in scope of the CNCF ecosystem. Yes, and regarding to the metrics and the choice of units and the values that you are collecting, um, are these going to change eventually? Are there coming new metrics into play um, regarding embodied or uh, emissions that you are collecting? Because I've been talking with people from Honeycomb who are in open telemetry and also having a sustainability data working group that's looking for a lead. So anyone <laughs> <laughs> who likes to build standards that others can build upon, um, like what, what's coming from the science side of things here? Yeah. yeah, so um, it's uh, it, also this has been, uh, there is room for discussion. So there was uh, a, an issue open, like what kind of sustainability metrics should we use? And then we were, yeah, maybe we, we like the SCI uh, standard because it's going to be ISO standard. And um, however, as I shown, I think like there are some complexities. For example, the embodied carbon dominates a lot and maybe um, it doesn't really capture what we would like to capture in a green review. Um, it would be interesting for sure to start a discussion and see how this can take place into the roadmap. Yeah, we had to start with some metrics, so we made some of them available that we kind of know and could e e like relatively easy start with, but I think it's in scope in the discussions on which metrics we're going to open up for also going forward. And SCI, will, it was also discussed that SCI will not be the only one, uh, the, not the only um, in method, yeah, methodology we're going to use uh, potentially, but it's also if you have like some experience, uh, you're welcome to share that in the discussions. Will there be some documentation on maybe how to run the benchmark yourself? So if you're not a project that's under a CNCF or a company, so you can at least like assess how you're doing without having like maybe an official batch or whatever the, the result from the reviewers. Yeah, this is a great idea. Uh, we are not at that point yet. It would be super nice to have a self, uh, self-served uh, platform that everybody could run. You're more than welcome to join us and contribute uh, to, to make this happen. <laughs> and one more question. Are you also looking for contributors to translate to German or? Yeah, yeah, we don't have a, <laughs> we don't have a German language. As part of that, we actually have Korean. 
and Mandarin, if I'm not mistaken, and Spanish. So if you would like, we would love that. Uh, yes, <laughs> let us know. <laughs> Sorry for the overtime. Um, uh, uh, so I think there's some similarities between CNCF activities and also uh, the green software foundation, right? So I think how uh, do you have a plan, you know, try to collaborating them with, you know, closely? Is that our strategy or something? I think there's some like in-house uh, this project that might be kind of ends up having kind of similarity. Mm. So mm. I think, as you said, like, we sh shouldn't like, waste our time or you know resources, right? Mm. In that kind of mentality. So what might be good, you know, our approaches? Mm. So let's say uh, I think energy measurement is not the end of the equation. Right? Mm. So I think we have to have like a carbon intensity and also a lot of other equation. You have to put it together and then to get to this carbon, you know, footprint, mm. right? So. Mm. Just, just want to have your thought. <laughs> yeah, that was actually a great, that was really great that you brought it up because when I talk without notes, of course, that's something I missed on mentioning. We do collaborate with organizations like Green Software Foundation, and this is the part of our stra overall strategy in the tag. So we had folks from Green Software Foundation, for example, coming and sharing about the impact framework that they uh, now have a carbon hack hackathon around. So how you uh, how they are developing this project to be able to kind of measure um, the uh, the energy and, and carbon emissions. I think um, through like a single way to configure that that type of measurement workflow. So they were present at our project meetings and presenting on that. And we have also folks in the tag who also contribute in the Green Software Foundation. So we have like contact points there as well. And it's not only Green Software Foundation, but also uh, Green Coding, I think, that the, when they shared about the Green Metrics uh, tool recently at one of our project meetings. So, and we have been talking also about water consumption, for instance, and the challenges there and how AI impacts it. So we have these discussions ongoing. And uh, if you, as well, if you have, for example, some suggestions or you maybe are uh, contributing to a, s a neighboring organization and would like to strengthen that collaboration as well, it's of course open. But to answer your question, yes, we have initiatives ongoing there with the other organizations. Yeah, uh, already contributing to some of the Kepler project already. Awesome, so I think cool. Already in the, you know, quick question. Yeah. Just wanna have a look. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then uh, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>